So welcome to the Get Out Disco Show. Today, I, I can't actually believe I'm saying this, we have the incredible Lonnie Liston-Smith as a guest. Thank you so much. Oh my God, this is a, a pinch me moment. I can't believe you've agreed to come on my show. So right. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Massive All right. Here. So thank you so, so much. So All I right. wanted... To, I wanted to kick things off and say, you know, what have you been working on recently and how can people support you? Let's start off with what's been going on in the present. Uh, well, lately, not too much because, you know, the music business, everything is kind of slowed down. And, oh, one good thing, uh, for years, the, the last two records I did was Flying Dutchman Renaissance and Live. So they finally got it straight. So Ace Records has just released Renaissance. So that's out now. And they're going to release live uh, in 2022. So that's good because people have been looking for Renaissance for years. And so I haven't, I haven't been on the road or anything. So it's just, just kind of taking it easy right now. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy world we're living in at the minute because one one second we think, you know, all oh, shows are going to be back on, we can go out, and then the next minute, no. So the music industry is really taking a hit. It's been crazy. Oh. I hope you've been keeping well during these crazy times. Yeah, you, you're right, Natasha. I mean, it's really been taking a hit because it's, um, you you know, then, then if you go to Europe, if they close the borders, then what are you going to do? Well, that's it. You're stranded. <laughs> so, knowing my luck that's what would happen to me <laughs> it's like you're not going home but I want to go home no you're not right. going home <laughs> right. do you think if things calm down you'll ever be back in the UK doing shows again um, maybe I just, I'm just trying to hope that, that everything kind of calms down in, in the yeah. future so um, kind of get back to normal because I, I know some musicians that went overseas, they say, you you test it before you get off the plane, you test it when you get off the plane, you yep. test it. I mean, <laughs> so it's, I just want things to be back kind of normal. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you because the world has changed drastically, you know? And yeah, I hope we can get you back. I remember I actually seen you play in Glasgow it used to be, I think it was the ABC building. This was a few years back. I went with my dad, who's also a fanatic. Couldn't believe that I'm interviewing you today, by the way. Um, uh -huh. We came to see you in Glasgow. This was about, this is maybe six, seven years ago. It was a while ago we came and Oh, that was fantastic. Oh, so great. when we get back, hopefully we can get you back in the UK. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to ask you, where did it all begin for you, Lonnie? Where did it start? Uh, well, well, my father is in music, and he was um, the harmonizing for a gospel group, and they went all over the world. And uh, so I have two younger brothers. Uh, the middle brother, Ray Smith, he had a hit record with the um, John Mills, a little bit of soap, Wash Away Your Tears. Then, of course, you heard my younger brother, Donald, singing on my records. So, and my father had that beautiful tenor voice. So, it was just music 24-7 all the time. I didn't have to make a choice about what I wanted to do. <laughs> and, you know, you know, like Sam Cook, we come by, come by the house when he's with the Soul Stirs, uh, Sister Rosetta Thorpe. I mean, it was just music all the time. And they had gospel festivals, so we met everyone. And so, and then, that's how I started. And then in high school, I heard Charlie Parker. I said, oh, shoot, what is he doing? They said, he's playing <laughs> jazz and improvisation. I said, oh, wow, that's what I want to do because he sounded so beautiful. And I just kept on going from that. So musical family. So from the off, it's been, I'm so glad you had a musical family. Honestly, the right. world is, thank you for this family. <laughs> All right, you're right. <laughs> So who would you say were your biggest influences when you're starting out? And even to this day, who really inspired you? So obviously jazz, who, who right. you know, which artists in particular really stood out for you? Well, you know, we, we, well, we, we all started with, you know, it, all of us, even trained everybody, you start in the church, you know, and then you you, you start with the gospel and and then eventually, you know, we found out about the blues and, um, but, 
And then my father, he, he was very, uh, very musical. I mean, so he liked all kinds of music. So we, we listened to, you know, Art Tatum, Earl Gardner, uh, Oscar Peterson. But I was always influenced by the horn player. You know, I like what, you know, what, what Miles did and, and, and Train and, and so, uh, so I said, wow, I wish I could do that, you know, on the piano. <laughs> but uh, so, and, and I guess, and then you know, I, all, all of them, you Duke Ellington, Count Basie, then all the great singers, Sarah Vaughn, Ella Fitzgerald, Betty Carter. So, I mean, I just listened to, to you know, all of them. Yeah. Oh, all great, great right. selections you picked there. So what was your first break into the music industry? Where did you get your first like aha moment and feel like things are really starting to take off? What was that for you? Uh, well, I guess when, um, okay, I, I went to Morgan State University and I graduated and was working all around Baltimore. And actually, you know, Gary Botts, he lived in Baltimore. He was we were all the same age. So we started working together. His father had a club called North End Lounge. So we, we used to do that. And then I worked in the Royal Stage Band. That was like the Apollo Band in New York was the Royal in the theater in Baltimore. So I played behind all the Motown acts, everything. But then I got to New York, started working with everyone, you know, all singers, Al Hibble, Joe Williams, Betty Carter, uh, then Rasson Roland Kirk, Max Roche, uh, Blake Lee, and, and I guess you know when when you, when you get with Miles Davis, you know that's <laughs> that's that's it. Cause you know if you notice, everyone that worked with Miles Davis when they leave the group, they form their own group. Mm -hmm. My, Miles makes you, makes you stronger because he was he was very candid all the time on stage, off stage, and uh, and he wanted you to to create every night, and that's hard to find. Uh, I mean, he wanted creativity. He didn't want no, just every, you know, everyday stuff, uh, performing. And, but I guess when, so I went to the studio and I did Astro Traveling Cosmic Form. But I guess when Expansions came out, I mean, it just took the world by storm. And then that was it. I mean, that's when you, everything just took off. Oh, wow. And what, a, what a track it is, honestly. There's been times where I've been out, I remember actually hearing it being played in uh, Croatia at Sunsea Beat and just, it was atmospheric, it was in the woods and expansions. And I was like, oh my God, it was one of those moments. So, you know, it's funny how music and you associate with different times. But I believe your career really blossomed when jazz experimentation collided with the world of electronics. Is there anything you can tell us about your early experiences with electronic instruments? Ah, oh yeah, well that's 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 interesting. Um but okay. Uh Farrell Saunders and I was, you know, was, was working together and uh and that we was before that I was everything was a grand piano. So working, you know, and we was always improvising and uh, experimenting and, and but then we would did the last record I did was with Farrell was uh Thimby. And we went to California. So, you know, with a grand piano, I don't have to do anything. So, the, you know, everybody, Farrell unpacking his horn, Six Mike B was unpacking the bass, the drum was sitting up. So I saw this instrument in the corner. So I asked the engineer, I said, what is that? He said, that's the Fender Rose piano. I said, wow, I never played this. I walked over and just started playing and you got a little knobs. You can say, what would this sound like? And Natasha, uh, I just started playing. And I started writing this song. Everybody ran them. Said, "Man, what are you doing?" I said, "I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just writing this song. I mean, right? It, it sounds great." They said, "Man, we got to record this now." I said, "I said okay." So well, they said, "What you gonna call it?" And I was studying astral projection. It sounded like we were floating through space. So I said, well, "Let's call it astral traveling." Oh. And so that was it. That first time I touched it in the rose and. And then you know, and then I started experimenting with it. Then Miles Davis called, and I went into the studio. We did, um, I think it was on the corner, and because they, they had three keyboard players, myself, Herbie Hancock, and another guy. So I said, "Well, okay, I guess I wait my turn." 
And so Miles walked over and said, you know, you know, Miles, what the bleep you doing? Waiting for us. I said, what you mean? He wanted all of us to play at the same time. I never done that. <gasps> okay, so then I gotta listen. Hurry, we gotta stay out of each other's way. Can't play the same thing. So then Miles said, okay, you wanna go on the road? I said, okay. So I said, well, now I'm gonna really play the Fender Rose. I get to Miles' house for rehearsal. I don't see a Fender Rose. I said, well, Miles, where's the Fender Rose? Oh, I'm tired of that. I don't wanna hear that no more. You know, Herbie Hancock, Chicken Real, Joe Zabanu, they all played it. So he said, I want you to play that. I said, what is that, Miles? The Japanese had just given him uh, an electric keyboard, but it had a lot of organ sound. Miles said, I want to, I want to hear that sound now. I said, uh-oh. I said, Miles, I never played it. He said, great, perfect. I said, can I take it home? No. So <laughs> Natasha, I had to learn and create and everything, but that's what he wanted. He wanted, you know, he wanted me to be that, you know, that creative and spontaneous all the time. So I had to be. Yeah, and pushing boundaries, you know, and that it's it's great for creativity. But it's, I imagine right. it was quite stressful, but, you know, the end product was oof, beautiful music. But I imagine, you know, being thrown in a situation like that, I'd be like. That's, oh. that's <laughs> it. I mean, I mean, I mean you, you, you had to, I had to create and I had to be spontaneous. And, oh, when I did expansions, uh, I remember Miles, he used to be on stage and he had his trumpet, but, but he had these pedals on the floor, hooked up to his trumpet. So I said, uh-oh. Well, suppose I hook these pedals up to the Fender Rose. And that's what I did. And came up, this is that, that was, came up with the cosmic sound. Oh. You know, you had a wah-wah pedal, echoplex, you know, and all kinds of things. So I got, I watched him do it. I said, oh, let me hook those up to the electric piano to see what happens. Oh, my and God. Worked. I just love it, especially the cosmic sound. I mean, I'm a space nut. I'm a <laughs> space. Oh, yeah, Honestly, no. I'm, oh, my God. Everything is cosmic, this, cosmic, that with me, honestly. I, I know. Just love, love space. And I love it when music and space collide. And that's why, you know, uh, my favourite records you've done, you know, Space Princess, um, Never Too Late, A Song for the Children, obviously Expansions. Um, oh, oh. Space. Lo oh God, I could go on forever. You've just that, that's an interesting point because uh, uh, I met this little kid. He was about 18, 19, playing bass. I said, "Wow, he's that's uh oh." I, I, I think he's 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 got it. It was Marcus Miller, and so I said, "Well, I, I'm getting ready to go to studio." I said, I'm, "I'm gonna take him into the studio." Marcus, Marcus wrote Space Princess and a song for the children. You know, Marcus Miller. Yeah, I, I, I used him when he was about 18 or 19 years old. And uh, he's on those albums, you know, that you, that you just mentioned. Uh, and so um, that, that was, when he did Space Princess, okay, we were trying to, you had that sort of like disco beat, but we said, we, we're going to put the jazz on top of it. I love and it. And that's it. And it worked. Absolutely yeah. love it. Honestly, you you give me disco, you give me jazz, and you give me space, and I'm just I'm one happy oh. cat. <laughs> I love That's it, it. <laughs> honestly. So, what yes. would you say are some of your most fond memories and biggest achievements throughout your career that really stand out for you? Um, see, well, you know, it's been so many, but I guess you know, like when I went to the UK, and then you you know, the first place was like London. When expansions took off and, and so I get in town, everybody said, Oh man, you the you the godfather of jazz fusion funk. I mean, they just I mean, yo, y'all just love the expansions and, and that that was a great feeling. And because that's the first time I wrote lyrics was expansions. And oh. I wanted people because most songs, you know, like my baby then left me and blah blah blah, you know, but we all know about that. But I was saying, let's let's take the next step. You know, then, so we can all try to, you know, live together with, without killing each other and all this. Expand your mind. And, and like you said about, about space, people realize space gives you a chance to breathe and, and meditate. And so that's that's what we need. And, and right now we, we, we need all kinds of stuff. The whole world is, is going through the same time, 
the same thing at the same time for the first time. That that's something. Yeah. It's it's been a lot hit at once, and sometimes I just like to imagine I'm out in space, are we out in the I, cosmos? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. But yeah, I noticed that with a lot of your music, the space reference as well. So are you, I take it you're like myself, are crazy. Oh, about the cosmos. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. I mean, because it's 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 because we know about every, 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 every all of us have the every everyday experiences and. Um, and we all had this basically the same problems, but uh, if, if if we don't like I had when the next happened, Spanish was a vision of a new world. So that I was trying to say, vision of a new world where everyone would try to work together and live in peace and harmony and cut out all the crazy wars and and, and confusion. Yeah. And because if you notice, when you meet people from different religions, everything everybody wants the same thing. You might speak a different language, That's, but so you know, I said, wow, what's the problem? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons why I love, I know I'm going off topic here, but it's one of the reasons why I love Star Trek so much, a vision of the future of how things could be if we all just kind of got on, you know? Right. <laughs> Me and I, my I, side, but that is one of the things, you know. Right. I mean, you know, just, just, just look at your background. I mean, that's, that's just... I mean, that's, that's the office right into it. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say, like, I know this is probably a really difficult question, you know, out of all the records that you've done, and by God, have you done quite a lot of records, what would you say has been one of your favourites to work on and why? Um, I guess, we you know, all, all, all the records were very fun because, you know, they were great, but... I guess I always go back to expansion because that that took, when that took off, and the first time I wrote lyrics, and everyone on expansion, all the guys were coming from a jazz background, and and a lot of the young kids thought uh, the bass was electric bass, but I would see some like B playing the upright bass, and so I guess expansions and was. Cause that just took off, and that started my my started really started my solo career, and but I enjoyed all the records though, and then me, you know like meeting different young musicians and all these different very talented musicians uh, that was that was great. Wow, what a career you've had though, honestly. It's just hearing these stories as well. I mean, my mind's blown, especially thinking about the Fender Roads going over and going, oh, you know, what's this thing? And then like, before you know it, you're recording. I love it. You know, what advice would you give to anyone starting out in music or, you know, just even uh, day-to-day advice? What would you what would you give to them, Lonnie? Yeah, uh, especially the young musicians, because I remember when I was working with Art Blakely, uh, Delonious Monk came by one night, you know, to hang out with Art, because they, they were friends. But and so I had a chance to, to hang out with, with them and after after the gig, after the show. And Monk was saying, you know, which is true, all all musicians, you have to find your own sound. And, you know, just just trying to copy someone else, that's that 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 doesn't mean anything. And then if you find your own sound, then when the people hear it, that, that will help them. And uh, so I, all young musicians, they should really try to find their own sound that, that is in them. And uh, don't try to copy anyone. Uh, oh, and also, just you know, learn, learn about the, the business of music. But we all learn that the hard way for some reason. Learn, learn, <laughs> learn, learn about it. I, I, guess, I guess in your field, same thing. You got to learn the yeah. business. There is a business of music. So, and we're so busy into the art of music. Uh, but that is, the art of music is more important. But, you know, learn about the business of music, and that, that, that also helps. That is funny. I was having this conversation earlier as well about, you know, how as creative people, we want to create. And then we've got this thing at the side where it's like, here's the business part. And it's like the necessary evil that we have to do. <laughs> but the thing we really want to do is sit and create. That That's where our heart is, you know. Right. But we've got to do this other thing. It's like, damn, but it's part of it. <laughs> it's part yeah. of it. You're right. But that's, that's a good way. You're right, Natasha. That's exactly what happens. Oh man, there's times I'm like, can I just write? I just want to write stuff. And then there's all this other thing you have to do. <laughs> That's you it. You want to create, but you got to 
they both go hand in hand now, unfortunately. Right. Especially right. in the digital world, now more than ever, you got to be a graphic designer, a promoter, you got, you got to do the whole thing. So it's it's not That's just it. about the music, there's so much more, unfortunately, but you know. Right. In this day and age, things are crazy. What can I say? It's all crazy. <laughs> oh, shoot. I mean, because I go online and, and, and I see now, I mean, even you know, even people in classical music and like in New York, Broadway been closed down. So that means all these actors, musicians and dancers have been off for, I don't know, a year, two years. Uh, like you say, it's, it's just a different time. Well, that's the thing as well. I was speaking about this earlier too. I keep, I keep going to say, oh, it's been a year. And then I'm like, has it been two years? We're all losing track of time because it's just, Time and everything has just sort of stopped and like, what's going on? And, you know, I think in the last, well, we'll say two years, because it's nearly been two years now, you know, it really highlighted the importance of the arts and how much, you know, mm. music and art really is important to the world because when it stops, people really feel it. Ah, that, that's what people don't, people don't realize, man. Everyone loves some form of music. And 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 it does something for them. It keeps them going. And because uh, I mean, even it's true when, when I hear a great song or creative music. I mean, you just it makes your day. It makes it makes everything. It makes you feel happier. Like everything's gonna be okay. That's what the art's supposed to do. Absolutely, and that's the thing. I always the re, one of the reasons why I love music so much is because I see it as like the soundtrack to my life. You know, so certain songs will take you back to certain points in time, you know? So music and art is important, everybody listening. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> but my last question for you, Lonnie, and this is quite a difficult question. And okay. if you find it too hard to answer, I totally understand because I would find this difficult. All if, right. you, if you were sent to Desert Island, right, and you uh, were told you were only allowed three records, what would those three records be? Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I went I, there. Oh, <laughs> that, oh, oh, that boy, he, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. That, that is, boy, I mean, that did, that did something to my brain. God, you know, we God. have the space now. <laughs> Ooh, boy, you, you slick, God, me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I never even I never even approached that uh, category. God, oh wow, that's deep, uh, Natasha. That's deep. That's deep. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, well, you good? You good? Um, <laughs> it's a tough question. It's one I would struggle with too. So if you right. can understand, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> I guess what you got to take. Um, I give him credit because I mean. The record sound actually well, well you gotta take what's going on by Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Was I mean, can you imagine something that was done like, what is it, 50 years ago? And it sounds like it was done yesterday. It's tight. And the lyrics are, are right fit right what's going on now. I know. Uh, boy, I never thought about that. Well, I gotta tell that's one, but I don't know about the other two. God <laughs> Okay, you got me. I I, I can only think of one. Golly, that's, <laughs> ooh, that's deep. Get one, that's good. It's a tough question. I don't make it. Oh, I'm, I mean, that. I'm going to remember that. That's <laughs> good. Oh, that's good. If, if you ever think of the other two, you need to give me a call so I can okay. let know. <laughs> all right, all right, that's good. I'm a, wow, that's, woo. Okay, that question does something to you. It, it does. It's like a... It's one of these things that makes you stop in your tracks and go, what have I just it's, asked? You're right. Okay, all right. All right. I'm going to meditate on that. <laughs> Speak to the cosmos. Get the answer. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much, Lonnie, for being on my show today. As I say, massive fan. But honestly, as I said, when I told my dad I was speaking to you, he nearly fainted. He was like, you're joking me. Because, you know. Oh, man. Well, tell him I said hello. Right. I will do.